Babe, I'm ready to be a gravel badass. Hey, we're we're here today with Flaco Torres. Yeah. Uh, Flaco, do you want to introduce yourself? I feel like I can't possibly do justice to the various hats that you wear. Oh, uh, they're not all important. Um, I'm Flaco Torres, recording artist, graphic designer, and member of Akron. Nice, yeah. nice. And how would you um, like identify yourself or describe yourself as a cyclist? Uh, I. I've been adopting the cyclist thing because it, it, you know, it's always nice to be a part of a community. I'm still learning about it. So most of the time I just tell me, I was like, I ride bikes. I, that's what I say. <laughs> I hardly ever use the term cyclist. I always talk about like people who ride bikes yeah. and riding bikes. So let's, let's ride bikes. Yeah, let's do it. So one of the things that I, um, I'm fascinated by in people's lives, but specifically around cycling is like how they got on a bike. Cause it was such a like, uh, not straightforward path for me to uh -huh. do that. Um, so how did you end up on a bicycle? I think, uh, I think my, my girlfriend got a bike a couple of years ago. Um, because she, she met someone in the cyclist community in Akron and she, she got a bike and she rode for about a year. And I don't know, I was, I was like, that looks like fun. Like I remember when I was a kid, I had this Ninja Turtle bike and all of that. Um, so I just was kind of watching her and then meeting when we would go places, meeting other people in the cyclist community that she met. And she was like, we can, you know, I can take you to Otis or when they were at the old location yeah. in Northside uh, Marketplace. Yeah, we just, one day we just went and they had like these older refurbished bikes or something like that. And they put one together for me. And I was like, yeah, I can do this, this is fun. And at the very least it would be something she and I could do together. Yeah. So that was, that was kind of where it started. Yeah. Um, so how has it evolved? Um, like how do you, you know, on a weekly or monthly basis maybe, like how are you riding your bike? Are you commuting? Are you doing it for recreation? Um. Oh, it's it's everything now. It's a, uh, it's recreation. It's commuting. It's um, exercise. It's I just want to be outside. I don't want to do anything. I don't necessarily want to go anywhere. I just want to be outside. Yeah. Um. It's it's everything for me now. And I'm a city kid. I'm I'm from New Jersey. My uh, my pops is from Queens. My um my mom is from Trent, New Jersey. So I grew up with public transportation and trains and and all of that. So like, I just remember seeing people on bikes and it wasn't a weird thing, you know? Right, right. Um, when we were talking before we started riding at the brewery, uh, you were talking about um, like when you commute or just riding to downtown Akron, like what your route is. Uh -huh. And like, I think hills are one of the things in Akron <laughs> that can be really intimidating to people. Yes. Or it, even if it's not like intimidating before you ride, you ride and you don't expect them. And then you're like, oh, what is this? Yeah. Um, so how, how have the hills been for you? Like, do you, I, I know that some people love them. Yeah. Other people don't. I, it, it depends on the day. It depends on the trip. I think um, I think they suck either way. <laughs> so you have to you have to look at it like all of the things you said. Like it's recreation, it's commuting, it's um, it's exercise, it's healthy. Um, so that that kind of adds to it. Because I think if everything was flat, it would also there'd be a lot yeah. of reasons I wouldn't get on the bike because it's just so easy. Um, so the hit the hills do kind of add a dynamic that makes it fun sometimes, makes it frustrating sometimes. But it's yeah. you know it's a part of where we live, and that's. And what I'm learning about uh, being a cyclist or riding bikes or whatever, like that's a part of it. Like there's, you're using your legs and not an engine. So yeah. <laughs> that's just yeah. what it is. I mean, it's gonna be harder. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what would you say are, like it's evolved from like, oh, you got into it because, you know, your partner was doing it and it was a way to spend time together and like, 
there was a, a door open for you to have a bicycle. Uh -huh. What do you think the next steps are? Like, do you have any goals or like, you know, that really looks like fun. I gotta find a way to try that piece of it. I know I definitely wanna do some of the rides with Dirty River. Um, the simple ones though, like the simple Yeti rides. Cause I'll look at some of the event pages and it's like, <laughs> all right, bring a cooler. You know, make sure you got food. And I was like, oh, I'm not prepared for this yet. But um, I, I definitely wanna do more group rides and meet more people in the community. Um, I wanna get a Tour de France outfit. Yeah. We were talking yep. about that earlier. Yeah. But it's got it's gotta be it's gotta be swaggy. It can't yeah. be like can't be corny. Like it's all out. Yeah, yeah. And then um just taking I think the other thing too is taking the oh. bikes to more places. Yeah. Um, I, I definitely wanna do that. Cause like Joe has been doing more of she's in Cleveland now and she takes her bike to she uh, takes the metro up to Cleveland and she takes her bike with her. Oh really? That's awesome. Cleveland. So I, I wanna do more stuff like that where it's like I travel with the bike. Yeah and actually ride around other places. Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, Tim does it more than I do it, but it's a fun thing, like, yeah. uh, to experience that. But also, like, um, you know, we're riding on some bike infrastructure right now, mm -hmm. but, like, to experience how other cities are doing it yeah. and to be, you know, we just passed a couple people on bikes, but in other cities, like, there's always other people yeah, absolutely. <laughs> on the bike lanes and stuff like that. And that's a really fun experience too. First time we went to Toronto, that was the very oh. first thing that we noticed. It was like, oh, there's there's real infrastructure here yeah. for a cyclist. Like, that's cool. Uh, Canadian cities, and I don't know the like political or cultural or social like background for this, uh -huh. but they have amazing uh, bicycle infrastructure. Like if you just go to Google Maps and turn on like the bike feature and like zoom in on like Toronto or Montreal, uh -huh. like all you see is green for the bike infrastructure. And then you look at Akron and you're like, Urgh. yeah. I'm, I'm still just getting excited off of Google Maps has picked up on like, I ride a bike. Yeah. So it suggests that first rather than like a car. Oh, that's great. It's like, oh, this is gonna take you 45 minutes. <laughs> and there are moderate hills, but. Yeah. So that's dope. Um, what do you think would be something like either a change in you or a change in our environment that like would make it easier for you to ride your bike more? Cause it sounds like you'd love to like go deeper. Mm -hmm. uh, I, th I think it's that in infrastructure conversation we're talking about. Like yeah. just, just uh, more bike lanes, more understanding from from the community and i know a lot of cities that are more bike conscious have this issue yeah where you know people in cars are like cyclists are doing whatever and cyclists are like everyone's a bad driver um i think all of those conversations like with whatever city you're in need to happen along with the cyclists and the drivers yeah. so everybody understands everybody on the road yeah um i think that that would make it that would make it a little easier because it, it's kind of nerve-wracking to yeah to um like we were talking about before you know you want to follow all the rules but you also don't want to die so right and we also talked about earlier where like i think that like uh the desire so, like as a cyclist to be conscientious of drivers and their expectations and you have a driver who's trying to be conscientious of the cyclist experience all that empathy almost makes a more confusing situation exactly and i think that the infrastructure that we have now like there's a lack of consistency mm -hmm. that sets everybody up for failure yeah yeah and we're you know we're we're moving slower than cars can so there's yeah. always the there's always the urge to you know well i can just get around this cyclist real quick and not really do anything that is safe for everybody. Um, yeah. <laughs> that dog said no. <laughs> well, that wasn't a dog. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Someone in that group sounded like a chihuahua. So what's your, what's your, <laughs> <laughs> what's your favorite like, cycling memory or bicycle ride? Um, of like all time or just like since I've been as an adult? Oh, it could be all time. I think, 
My Ninja Turtle bike, man. That bike was so uh, cool. Ninja Turtle bike <laughs> sounds awesome. It was cool. It was, I think it was my first bike. I had training wheels. Um, and we lived, we lived in Macon, Georgia at the time. And I just remember we had a pretty big backyard, but also our front yard was on like a slanted hill. Yeah. So like riding the bike down the hill onto the sidewalk, um, that was fun. I think my favorite memory of just cycling in general is just getting out and just feeling free. Yeah. And just riding around with no destination, or even if you do have a destination, it's just, it's a fun way to get around. Um, you're always doing something good for your body, for your mind. Yeah, and I, I think that being in, like you were talking about before, being in nature, I feel like nature has this ability to like get under your skin without like effort, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So like you're doing something that's really positive for your body without exerting any effort than just being, yeah. you know? Like you're exerting effort when you're riding your bike, obviously, but like, that's what you're focused on. You're not like, I am being in nature to do good for me. Yeah. No, and you're just, you're just, just kind of being and, and doing, and it's, it's fun. It's, yeah. it's, it's fun to see other cyclists and they just, you know, you just kind of nod at each other. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's been, it's been great for me for my mental space, so. Yeah. Especially days like today, it's not too hot, it's not too cold. Yeah. Um, Have you ever uh, gotten caught in the rain or gone out on a bike ride and been like, mm, maybe I should have checked the weather? Oh, every day, <laughs> every, every day. Um, I haven't been caught in like a bad rain. Okay. I've, I've been caught in like the nice little drizzle where you're like, fuck, there's suede on my sneakers. <laughs> um, that sucks. <laughs> But no, not not a not a bad one. I usually am very conscious of checking the the Weather Channel app before I leave, and kind of building my day around around that. Yeah. Um, both Tim and I are not like we very much look at the radar before we go riding. Uh huh. Um, but you know when we do our longer trips, you you can't plan around the weather. Oh, you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And so we have been. I mean, there have been other times too, but we've gotten completely drenched and, but it's also funny because it's like in that situation, it's a different context and you're like, this is just what it is. Yeah, that's a, that's a part of the, like me showing up moist or sweaty everywhere I go. Right. It's just a part of it now. Right, um, you're trying to like go to some event that is like you're engaging with the community or you're, whatever yeah. and you show up and you're like dripping and that's just kind of weird i also think it's like the ultimate flex though um because i always look at people you know wealthy people and the kind of things that they do and when you look at that like they're riding bikes they're, they're yeah they're walking they're you know not wearing a lot of flashy clothes or, or, or whatever it is so i kind of like it showing up to an event where people don't necessarily know who you are, but you're supposed to be there, you're on the guest list or whatever, and they're like, who's this person that showed up yeah. on a bike? And it's like, yeah, I'm, the, the name on the marquee is the guy that showed up on the bike. Right. Um, like, that's, that's fun sometimes. Yeah. Um, no, I, I also like to push those boundaries. I mean, I have a, like, desk job uh, working for a nonprofit, and, but I'm like, <laughs> I, now I feel awkward saying this. I'm relatively like well respected in what I do, but I like, you know, have messy hair and like I shower once a week yeah. and like I just show up and I know that like the expectation is that I put it together. Uh huh. But like, why? Yeah. Me washing my hair doesn't change like how I do my job. Exactly. No, I I, I feel I feel the same way. It's like yo, this is I'm here and I'm gonna do what I do at the highest level. Yeah. That I can do it. Um. Well, and like you said, like cycling is good for my mental health. Like, yeah. so riding a bike and getting sweaty is probably actually a factor in contributing to make you a better performer yeah. and being more creative. When I'm, especially, I, I have my headphones with me a lot, but the times that I don't, 
and I just kind of listened to the sounds of yeah. just nature outside, traffic, whatever, whatever. I realized I, I do show up in a better mental space because I've been able to work through a couple of things. Yeah. Um, well, and, I mean, and that's just. Oh, I forgot that's about this. Not even focusing on like the the chem the neurotransmitters and chemicals in your brain, like endorphins and adrenaline, and like that balancing out any pre-event uh, negative chemicals that mm -hmm. might be there. Yeah, I, I I love it. People people look so dumbfounded sometimes. Yeah, they're like, "You rode your bike here?" I'm like, "Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I did." So, what would you? If you had a buddy who was like, oh man, I, I want to get into bicycle riding. Like, what would you tell them? Like, what would be your advice or like your cautionary tale? Uh, I, I think the, it's kind of like art museums. I, people that are weary of art museums and, and kind of like art events and stuff like that, just reminding people that like, yo, it's a bike. This is literally for everybody. Yeah. Like there are a bunch of ways that we continue to try and culture people out, price people out, like all of that stuff is like, it's a bike. So just keeping, yeah. keeping that in mind and not being so worried about uh, what, what group of people this is supposed to be for or am I supposed to be doing this? Just finding the reasons that it's for you and remembering that it is for everybody. Yeah. Um, and then just, just trying it out. You know, you don't have to, you don't have to try and go get the super new mountain bike right. or whatever. Like you can get something that works for your pace and just, yeah. get, just get outside. Well, I mean, and you mentioned it that like you went into Dirty River and they had some things that were more approachable, like price point and commitment wise. And like, uh -huh. I wouldn't have ever started riding bikes had Tim not like basically put a bicycle underneath me. Yeah. And same, like, I don't, I don't know if I would have if Joe didn't get her bike, I don't know if I would have tried it. Cause there's also the point too of, there's a perception about black cyclists, I think, or just black people on bikes that there's yeah. a, okay, this must be, this person must be homeless or they must be broke or like whatever. Right, or if your bike is nice, like yeah. why is that guy riding that bike? Exactly. Like, uh, and I, I've had some of that with, with my bike, like, oh, what, you know, what do you do or whatever? Uh, yeah. So I don't know if I, you know, if my girlfriend didn't have a bike, if I would have thought it was for me, but I got to see that. Oh, this is this is dope. And she's meeting, yeah. she's meeting a bunch of people and we can spend more time together. So cool. And I think we see black people now that are just like asking us questions. Even our free black show, when we did the the work in progress thing, like some of the friends that came, it's like, oh, I need to check this place out. Like I need to yeah. come get a bike. So like, that's cool. That's awesome. So if we, if we think about our ideal world, which I know I think about it a lot these days because we're so far from it. Mm -hmm. um, but how would you see, like, how do you see cycling helping us get there? Or like, how do you see cycling as part of that ideal picture? I think just re uh, people remembering that it is, it is healthy for us. It's, it's good for the environment. Um, it's an easier entry point into being more environmentally conscious and, and so on and so forth. There is a car um, back. Apologies. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Okay. Um, yeah, it's, a, it's an easier entry point than, you know, becoming vegan or uh, CSA drop-offs or composting or something like that. So yeah. I, th I think ideally that would that would be, I would love to see it be the, f the first gate for people. Yeah. You know what, I'm gonna consider cycling a quarter of the time. I do you think know. it is kind of a gateway drug. Like you, you feel better and it gives you more energy and like you recognize more opportunities to feel better yeah. and you kind of just go from there. Yeah. And it doesn't matter like what your entree point was, you're still getting all of those benefits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I think that that would be cool. And the more people that are doing it, the, uh, yeah. the more normal it, it will become. You, so. you reach that critical mass, if yeah. you will. Um, okay, I guess I'm gonna, 
I'm gonna ride up the big hill to go home. All right, I'm gonna stay as flat as I possibly can. Okay. <laughs> <Take> Bye. <it easy. laughs>